This is Jess, Wes and our daughter Izzy. After selling our house and most of our possessions at the end of 2021, we've packed up our Van Bevan to tour Australia. We are Life is Vanderful. Good morning, we are in the little town of Nanup, uh, which is in the southwest, Western Australia. It's, uh, and it's freezing as you can tell from my, from my attire. I think my eyes are watering too, it's, it's that cold, so we're out getting a coffee at the moment. Um, and yeah, it's here in this town, Nanup. There's a flower festival going on at the moment um, for, this, for this last week of August. Yes, there's flowers everywhere here, so it's really, really cool. Um, yeah, not much at the moment because it's a Tuesday, most of the stuff happens on the weekend. And one of the things we're actually wondering is, there's so many towns that end in UP, um, Manjimup, Joondalup, Nanup, like this town where we are now. I um, really want to have to Google that and find out why, why that is, what that suffix means. Um, so if anyone uh, knows, drop us, drop us um, some info in the comments below. How, how cold are you mum? Actually, I'm all right. I took off my big jacket. You're okay after running. <laughs> lady at the caravan park laughed when we were only going to stay for one night uh, in Nanup here. Um, we had no idea there was a flower festival going on. You said you've got to stay here for at least a couple of days, um, but it is dead in the town and Jess was just saying, what were you saying? I think it's quite possibly the quietest town we've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> it's just beautiful though, very quaint, very pretty. Yeah, but just, yeah, really nice town, but yeah, nothing going on. Really good coffee though. So we're at the next town with the up at the end of its name, Manjum Up. It's 45 minutes from where we were at Nan Up. Uh, and this, this seems like a pretty cool place. They've kept um, all the historic um, section of the town and they've incorporated it into this playground um, coffee shop, um, museum that's there, um, but yeah, they've kept all the different places, and there's like historic house, the old police lockup, police station, blacksmith, school, vehicle shed, doctor surgery, settler's cottage. So yeah, they've sort of modernised it, but also kept the kept the history here, which is which is pretty exciting. And yeah, really good playground for Izzy, which is why we why we came here in the first place. So she's at the at the castle at the moment climbing and uh, we'll probably stop and have some lunch and get a coffee here and that looks like a pretty big slide Let's see if I can help myself on that so Jess has already been the guinea pig on the slide and tested it out before going with Izzy so guinea pig in the sense that uh, she tested it first not that she likes to eat grass carrots and live in a small cage are you ready? So, Guys, here we go. Look where you're going. Here they come. Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> Daddy's turn. Ready to set? Yeah! Go! Woohoo! Alright guys, start climbing. We've come to Gloucester Tree, which is an old um, tree that has been used in the past as a fire lookout. It's one of a few, I think there's maybe three or so in the area. 
Um, so there's another one called Bicentennial Tree, which is about 47 meters. This carry tree is 53 meters tall. Um, so we'll see how far we can get up there. Scary. I made it to the top and heights aren't usually my thing. 53 meters up and <laughs> that was actually pretty, pretty scary. Um, it's starting to blow windy now, which makes it even more interesting. But we're at the top. It doesn't feel that high when you're up here looking out, but when you look vertically straight down, which is what you're not supposed to do, uh, that's when you really feel the the effects of being up so high. Um, yeah, so here we are in a cage on the Gloucester tree. And it's supposed to be a good lookout for bushfires, but I think all the other trees have grown so much you can't actually you can't actually see very far around um, from this point but made it up here now now to get down and I'll, I'll show you what the views like but it's basically just lots of other leaves and lots of other trees hey dad hey guys she's almost near the top did a lot quicker than than I did you look so tiny! Hi! I made it to the top! Woohoo! Made it to the top! You can't really see how high you are um, looking around because all you see are the bottoms of trees. But yeah, 53 meters high. We're so lucky that we came here on a wet, sorry, on a dry day and not a wet day um, because the the pegs were really stable. I was expecting smaller pegs, they're actually quite wide bars which made it a lot easier. Um, I think as long as you just keep looking straight up and don't look down it's actually not that bad. Um, yeah the hardest thing is just the stair climb in general because I can't remember the last time I climbed that many stairs. And just for anyone wondering, we didn't take Izzy up, it was just uh we took in turns, Jess and I, so as you stay down here, just coming back down again. <sighs> yeah, like, like you said too, it doesn't actually feel like it's 53 metres high, because all you see is the tops of the trees. Um, it's not as scary as I thought it would be. Like as long as you keep yeah. one foot in front of the other, and we're really lucky it's like not a wet day, it's nice and dry. Um, yeah, it's not really, I think the scariest thing was when Izzy tried to <laughs> climb up the tree without me. So we can't work out when or where Izzy has learnt it, but as I was climbing the tree and more so coming back down, she was chanting, you're the man, you're the man to me. So that was, that was kind of cool. What do you think so? Daddy, you're the man. That's all that matters. Daddy, you're the man. Daddy, you're the man. Daddy, you're the man. Oh. I don't know where she's learnt that, but she was she was cheering me on. Really cool. So we've left Pemberton this morning, um, which is where we climbed the Gloucester tree, and then today we've started making our way towards Denmark. And on the way to Denmark, there is Williams Bay National Park. So we're taking a little stroll through there where we can go see some really awesome granite rock formations called Elephant Rocks. And then Green's Pool as well, which is supposed to have beautiful turquoise water and the widest sand. Not sure how turquoise it's going to look with today's weather, it's a little bit overcast again. Um, also got a nice surprise this morning, ran into some friends, um, a girl that I used to work with um, in a random little library here. So we're going to catch up with them tonight too and have a little pizza night which should be really fun. When I say um, library, I should actually mention it was a visitor centre slash library. Um, and also we've just run into some people here on the walk down to go see Elephant Rocks. Um, so make sure to look out for a tiger snake. I'm hoping we don't run into that guy.
could be completely wrong but I believe that is a tree that I'm filming but behind said tree is monkey rocks and here for reference is a monkey One thousand three hundred and fifty million years ago, uh, the continent of what we now know as Australia and Antarctica collided, and that's what caused these massive boulders here um, at the Gap Natural Bridge, which is just thirty minutes out of Albany, or Albany, however you want to pronounce it or say it. Um, so I'm going to go take a look around now. I'm going to go stand on the lookout, which is a flexible lookout, so it moves. And this bridge has got quite a bit of quite a bit of bounce in it actually so out on the edge here overhanging the rocks and um, I can feel the whole thing bounce every time I move which uh, just adds to the excitement and adds to the fun and I think it weighs I'm gonna get this wrong now something like 27,000 tons 27 tons it could actually hold 27 tons which would be four African elephants, which is pretty crazy. Alrighty, so we're at the blowholes, which is three minute drive around the corner from uh, Natural Bridge and the Gap. And a little bit out of breath because I was running before. It's sort of towards the end of the day here, sun's getting low. Uh, we've got to check into our accommodation before five. We've also got to go past the supermarket to get some um, stuff to make pizza. So I'll stop my rambling now because we've got some steps. We're about to go down and we'll see if the blowholes are blowing today. 78 steps down for anyone who's wondering or cares. So the path just kind of ends there with no sign. Um, maybe I'll follow the footsteps here. I'm guessing there the blowhole, blowholes just around the corner. Um, see if we cannot slip off any rocks, but I guess this is uh, where you go to view them. There's not a huge amount of swell today, so I doubt they'll be super impressive or super loud, but we'll, we'll go have a look. So it's pretty high up here, and I forgot to bring my drone in all the rush, but I think we're well high enough to get a good view of what my whole here are all about. Okay, I've walked a bit further and it looks like the blowholes are 33 metres this way. So I was I was way off. Let's, uh, let's see if they're any good. So I'm down at the blowholes here. I'm not sure if you could hear that, but that was pretty loud from where I'm standing. I mean, you're standing 
Ooh. when you're standing at like a 20 degree angle on some rocks and there's danger warning signs everywhere and you can't actually see the water coming into this this blowhole here you can just hear it and it's echoing so loud um, it's really quite scary <laughs> um, here by myself as well which doesn't help with no phone receptions that's always a sensible thing to do but yeah I think almost having no water is almost scarier because it's pretty quiet apart from some swell out there then all of a sudden you just get this intake of water down below and and the sound resonates up through the blowhole and scares the living bejesus out of me so um, yeah that was that was quite an experience as I was starting to peer closer at, at the edge um, so I think I will go back to the van now and pizzas for dinner so that sounds good see you blowholes thank you We've come out to Granite Skywalk this morning. So it's just about half an hour out of Albany where we're staying um, in a national park, which I won't even try and pronounce. <laughs> Peringerup. Peringerup. Um, it's a 4K return walk to get to the Skywalk. Oh, wow, there's some purple flowers. Wow, that's a highlight. <laughs> um, yeah, 4K return. Then at the end, there's a seven meter climb up a ladder and lots of scrambling over boulders. So it sounds like the kind of adventure walk that Izzy loves. <laughs> See, she's so excited. Who taught you this? Who taught you this? Daddy! No. Today we have the idea to climb this thing behind us, which is um, Bluff Knoll. <laughs> but if you can't tell, it is super windy, very wet, and we're just at the base of it, and it's a four hour return trip. So we're not really sure it's the wisest idea with Izzy to be going up today, um, but we're gonna be camping 10 minutes away from here. So we'll reassess in the morning and then hopefully we can go up. Apparently it is one of the only places in um, Western Australia where you can see snow and being the end of winter we might have an opportunity for that so that'd be cool so yeah we'll reassess in the morning what the weather's like and maybe try then uh, I don't know what we're going to do now because we're kind of in the middle of nowhere so maybe check out a cafe or a local winery and then just hang out and play puzzles and read books in the van today Okay, so it's 10 minutes later and we have reassessed. The sun has come out a little bit. So we thought we'll give it a go today. Um, we can always turn back if the weather turns bad. So here we go.
almost two thirds of the way. So unfortunately, I don't think that's the top. There's two peaks. I think that's the lower one, so still a little bit to go. Just as it's a stone's throw away. That's not 600 meters. You can't throw 600 meters. So climbing Bluff Knoll yesterday turned out to be a pretty huge mistake. Um, we were going to hike up with Izzy in the pack because it was so steep and then let her walk back down. Um, and going up, things seemed to be going quite all right. She was relatively happy sitting in a pack and she even had a little nap. Um, but about 100 meters from the top, just after you come around the back of the mountain, the weather just drastically changes. And you know, we've climbed mountains before, we should have known that that could happen. Um, we were prepared, we had, we had warm gear, Izzy had an undershirt, a long sleeve shirt, jackets, boots, beanies galore, but um, she still felt that it was incredibly cold and she started to feel the cold and we were 20 meters from the top um, and I could start to hear her teeth chattering. So Wes made a little bolt up the top to have a quick look around, which there was nothing. <laughs> anyway, it was, um, the view was entirely covered in mist, so pointless. Uh, no point in me going up there. Um, he caught up with me as I was bolting back down the hill and basically just trying to get to the van as soon as possible, get our girl wrapped up in a nice warm blanket, and get her some hot milk. Um, she was fine. Within 10 minutes of being back in the car, she was the happiest little child, but she cried the whole way down the mountain and we just felt so guilty and so horrible for making her go through that. Um, really stupid and dangerous, really. I mean, I just thought, God, what if I got, what if she got hypothermia? And, and then the whole time I'm worried about Wes as well running down the mountain with his heart condition. It was just really one of those days where you just make a really foolish choice. And I don't think we'll be doing any mountains that extreme anymore until our little girl is a big girl. Um, so lesson learned, glad that everyone is happy and okay and Izzy is exceptionally happy today. She's um, delighted to be out of the van after driving all the way to Wave Rock, which we're just about to go and check out. So that's why you didn't see <laughs> too much more from us yesterday hiking the mountain. Just thought I'd give a little recap. Um, and if you are traveling with small kids and you're considering doing um, Bluff Knoll Mountain, I would strongly recommend against it. Also, if any of the people who were on the mountain yesterday are watching, um, we ran a, came across a lot of well many people who tried to help put Izzy's hood back on over a beanie, even though she refused to let them, um, offering us chocolate and everything for her. Thank you so much to those people. Um, we obviously were just running past to get her back to a warm environment as soon as possible. So sorry we didn't thank you in person, but we really appreciate the kindness of strangers. So we're at Wave Rock today um, we drove three hours from where we stayed last night uh, which was right next to Bluff Knoll a little place there which was super convenient um, heaps and heaps of birds on the road today so we had to dodge dodge a lot of birds in big packs didn't want to damage them or Bevan um, Izzy's woken up uh, in a great mood today the sun's shining um, and it's yeah pretty fantastic weather even though it's a bit cold um, for, for still what is classified as winter here in Australia so that's um, that's all the, all the positives uh, and as I said we're at Wave Rock it's really a short walk from the car park to the the rock itself um, and yeah we'll go we'll go check it out now oh and I'm also getting a little bit tired of Jess's jokes at the moment with regarding to waving at every rock that she sees so wearing a little bit thin so don't know about if mum jokes are a thing like dad jokes but that's just finds it hilarious anyway I'm at Wave Rock
and to give a sense of size and perspective um, it's 15 meters high and 110 meters long for those wondering so the rock formed um, due to basically water sitting alongside the rock um, and what gave it a sort of wave-like appearance was that this water would seep down and break away all the soil around it um, and then in the summer it would parts of it would dry but underneath would still be wet and erode so just basically time plus rain plus water plus the soil um, and a lot of time <laughs> is the big factor um, gave us the shape that we we see here today known as wave rock And this is the view from on top of Wave Rock. Going on a quick bike ride um, to Lake Magic, which is supposed to be a salt pool. Um, there's also a building resort out there with a, with a salt pool. Oh, I've dropped my hat. Stand by. Thank you. What do you reckon, Jess? It's not that cold. Well, what would your nipple say? Hello. <laughs> When they sing and dance Oh, I wish it was me Every night So Lake Magic is supposed to be very therapeutic for your uh, muscles and after our big hike yesterday I thought it would be a good idea to go in and they've got um, like they've built a little mini recreation pool beside the lake which is supposed to be the same water and it was just freezing cold it didn't feel very buoyant at all Glad it didn't go. <laughs> and then there's the big lake behind us over here um put our feet in but it doesn't feel any more buoyant than normal water so not going to go in it's very um rocky around the out outer edges um so don't really think it's worth it just explained about the salt pool and salt lake um it's part of a resort that I think is being refurbished and you can just sort of ride past it so it's one of the weirdest things you've sort of come across it feels like a ghost town and there's remnants of old tour buses and old cars and old buildings around it's it's quite strange a little bit creepy and kind of cool all in the same breath 